Greetings, young true believers. So today's uh, excerpt, The Value of Laws, Explanation and Prediction uh, by Rudolf Carnap is actually taken from this work, The Philosophical Foundations of Physics, uh, which Carnap published in 66. Um, and as you, you read at the beginning of the, the uh, passage, right, Carnap's talking about the uh, tradition, the German tradition, philosophical tradition that broke with the metaphysics. Uh, metaphysics, in case you don't know, is the philosophical study of the ultimate nature of reality. And uh, the German philosophers um, and physicists of the late 19th century, again, he named some like Gustav Kirchhoff and Ernst Mach. And if, if Mach sounds familiar, excuse Ernst Mach who was, a, again, a German philosopher and physicist, his name is now the unit of measurement for how fast you're traveling past the uh, the sound barrier. Anyway, they um, those those figures, again, like Kirchhoff and, and Mach, they broke with the German philosophical tradition of people like Schelling and Fichte and Hegel, who wanted a deeper understanding of what was going on in a natural world. So they wanted to go beneath, if you will, right, uh, deeper than the physics uh, of the day. As, uh, as Carnap puts it, instead of asking how questions, they wanted to ask why questions, right? And the physicists responded, you know, there's nothing beyond the how questions, right? Uh, there is no, there are no why questions. You're, when you when you ask why questions, you're asking metaphysical questions. Now, <clears throat> since Carnap's day, there's been a bit of a thaw, philosophically speaking, with respect to metaphysics. It's no longer the 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 boogeyman that it was, say, in the 1930s and 40s, where it was just anathema to even ask uh, metaphysical questions. Um, but Part of the concern regarding metaphysical questions can be uh, can be understood when you look at the example that Carnap gives us. So he talks about uh, this German philosopher of science and uh, uh, he's a chemist, I believe. He, he, uh, yeah, Hans Driesch. So Hans Driesch, uh, like many philosophers of science. He was initially a scientist, became interested in the philosophical questions, went back, got a Ph.D. in uh, philosophy and began teaching philosophy and writing philosophy as well. As a matter of fact, uh, San Jose State's own uh, Dr. Janet Stimwittle, our department chair, uh, first earned a degree, a Ph.D. in chemics, uh, chemistry and then came back uh, and studied philosophy because she realized that the questions she had about science were philosophical in, in character. Um, but nevertheless, Dries, she is a great uh, biologist. He studied um, how sea urchins uh, and other animals that are able, capable of regenerating limbs, how they do it, what the process is. And uh, along the way, you know, Dries, he's, he's, he's making some, uh, some really novel headway in the study of regeneration limbs and bio, uh, in biology generally, but he begins to ask those those why questions, those metaphysical questions of, of Hegel and, and Fichte again. And he posits what's known as intellectes. Um, now, intellectes is a, a philosophical term, has a long tradition, as Carnap notes, that goes all the way back to Aristotle. Dries uses it somewhat differently. Dries seems to be taking his cue from the uh, 19th century uh, German or French, excuse me, French philosopher um, Henri Bergson, who posited that there was a uh, elan vital of, of life force uh, in every living thing that makes it do what it what it does, right? So, what makes the sea urchin regrow its limbs is is an elan vital, right? This, uh, as as uh, Dries calls it, uh, uh, an intellecti that just compels it to do what it does, right? So, you know, Carnap and his group in the Vienna Circle, Carl Hempel, uh, Otto Neurath, etc., all the, all the famous logical positivist philosophers, um, they, they were enamored of Tricia's work. You know, they really liked his, his pioneering work in biology, but they didn't like the, the metaphysical part so much. So at a conference one, you know, uh, one year, I think uh, Carnap says this was 36, uh, 
it was 34 in Prague, they asked him, uh, well, do you have any laws, right? Do you have any laws that you can use to describe how these intellectuals work? And, and Dries, you know, protested, oh, that's the, that's the wrong kind of question to ask, right? But, uh, and then Dries wanted to, to appeal to Grover Maxwell in England in the late 19th century, and he posited uh, electromagnetism at a, you know, at a time when nobody could conclusively demonstrate what it was, but he, he argued it was a force that we needed to explain the, beha you know, the, the behavior of certain uh, uh, phenomena, right? And it turns out Maxwell was right. There is a force, electromagnetism, and Dries was trying to argue the same thing. But what, what Dries gets wrong and what Carnap points out is that you have to be able to provide laws, right? And let's say a word about what it means for uh, when, when philosophers talk about scientific laws. A law is just, in the words of David Hume, observed regularities and constant conjunction, right? These things happen often. These things go hand in hand. They, they occur at the same time as these other phenomena. Observed regularities, constant conjunction. That's all that's meant by laws, right? Uh, as Carnap himself notes, right, empirical laws aren't like logical or mathematical laws. They're not that ironclad, right? There's there's always some ambiguity and the possibility for exceptions, but uh, you should immediately be suspicious when someone begins positing forces uh, for which they can offer no account of laws. And then they can't, and as Carnap goes on to note, they can't offer any predictions either. It's a hallmark of science to be able to offer up predictions. Uh, and that's exactly where Drisha's theory, his intellect theory failed, right? Um, as Carnap tells us, this is the, the, the last uh, sentence of this particular passage, right? Um, There's a knowledge of specific facts, a knowledge of certain observed regularities that can be expressed as universal or statistical laws and provide a basis for the prediction of unknown facts. Prediction is involved in every act of human behavior that involves deliberate choice. Without it, both science and everyday life would be impossible.